The Kawasaki Z1000, a Sugomi inspired stripped back and raw super naked from Team Green, and the powerhouse that sits atop Yamaha's Masters of Torque range, the MT-10. If you're looking at a 1000cc super naked, these are two of the most popular options, and today they are going head to head in direct specs comparison. Hey, I'm Quackerjack, and welcome to another episode in the Versus series, where we put two bikes together under the magnifying glass to compare the claimed engine and power stats, exhaust sounds, weight, suspension and brakes, features and price. But before we get started, please do me a huge favor and give this video a like, hit subscribe to join our fast growing motorcycle loving family and leave a comment down below telling me which bike you prefer. Alright, let's get straight into it. First of all, let's get a good look at both of these motorcycles. The 2021 models remain almost the same as the previous, with the Z1000 still featuring the aggressive Sugomi styling and the MT still looking like something from Transformers. I'm going to throw up some photos of each now so you can decide which one you prefer. While I personally like the look of both bikes, I think the Z1000 does narrowly beat out the MT in the looks department, with its Sugomi inspired lines and muscular stance. It also made my list of sexiest motorcycles of 2020, because in person it's a real head turner. Also, quick note, while both bikes feature LEDs, only the Kawasaki has both running lights on, with the Yamaha falling victim to one of my personal pet peeves of only having one running headlight. But again, this is personal opinion, so which one do you like better? Now, to the engines. This is where the competition between these two starts to heat up. The heart fueling the mighty Z1000 is a 1043cc inline 4 cylinder engine that produces 140 horsepower at 10,000 rpm and a huge 111 newton meters of torque at 7,300. To put that into perspective, that is only 1.5 newton meters less than the $50,000 M1000RR race bike from the previous episode. This means that the Cowie is capable of reaching 100 km an hour in around 3 seconds and travel onto a top speed of 240 km an hour, with claims of it reaching upwards of 250, so it's a very very quick motorcycle. However, the Master of Torque MT-10 is rocking a 998cc inline 4 that includes the same cross-plane crankshaft technology as the legendary Yamaha R1. This means that even though it's about 45cc smaller in overall size than the Kawasaki, it produces a higher 160 horsepower at 11,500 rpm and the same 111 newton meters of torque. That pushes the bike from 0 to 100 in 3 seconds and up to a top speed of a claimed 250 km an hour. But again, I suspect that both of these bikes can go faster if their limiters were removed. So at the end of the day, while the Kawasaki does have the slightly bigger engine, the Yamaha comes out on top having an extra 20 horses over its competitor. And that's quite a big difference. But it should also be pointed out that while both of these bikes are set up to produce a lot of their power down low and be usable on the street, Yamaha's MT line is notorious for being very, very front end happy. And while they claim to have toned it down a little bit in the newer models, just keep in mind that some riders may not enjoy the hoon-like characteristics of the bike as much as others. But hey, again, each to their own, and I suppose you'd save changing the front tire as often. Let's also have a listen to the exhaust of these two machines. Moving on to weight, due to their large engines, these are not the lightest motorcycles around. The Z1000 is stepping up to the plate with a wet weight of 221 kilograms and is definitely the heavier of the two bikes. The MT10 is 11 kilograms lighter with a claimed wet weight of 210 kilograms. That is a fair difference, and the victory in this department goes to the Yamaha. Of course, what's more important is how that weight is used. So let's now look at the suspension and brakes. On the Cowie, up front, the Z1000 is rocking a fully adjustable 41mm shower inverted fork, and at the back, a gas-charged Olin's horizontal backlink, which is also fully adjustable. With a more upright sitting position than a sports bike, and a rider height of 815mm, this means you're looking at a comfortable motorcycle from around town that will absolutely tear up mountain roads when you want to have some fun. This bike is running very light on extra electronic aids, which helps provide a more raw, primal riding experience. If you want to feel connected to the bike and destroy the streets, this is the one for you. The Yamaha, however, is featuring a 43mm fully adjustable KYB inverted fork up front, 
as well as a KYB piggyback shock, which is also fully adjustable at the rear. Now they have made the wheelbase shorter on the MT-10, and this means that it is very nimble and swift. It also means that it's very easy to ride around town on only your rear wheel. This bike does also have riding modes and other rider aids, which the Cowie is lacking. If we were to give each of these two a brief description, the Z1000 is a raw and unfiltered street fighter riding experience, whereas the MT-10 is designed to be a very fun, very quick little rocket ship. Of course, it's also important to be able to brake efficiently as well. So on the Kawasaki, for the brakes, up front you have dual semi-floating 310mm pedal discs with dual monoblock opposed 4 piston calipers, and at the back a single 250mm pedal disc with single bore pin slide calipers. On the Yamaha, at the front are dual 320mm hydraulic discs with radially mounted 4 piston calipers and a 220mm hydraulic disc at the rear. Both bikes also come with ABS and should brake very well. Now to features. This is somewhere where the two bikes differ again, with the Kawasaki not having a whole lot on offer as extra features on top of the riding experience. The Z1000's features include full LEDs, semi-digital instrument cluster, dual channel ABS, quad mufflers, assist and slipper clutch, Z pattern on the seat, and a 17 litre fuel tank. Now, I don't personally have an issue with the lack of extra features other than the old dash. I think for the price you're paying for these two bikes, it would have been nice for Kawasaki to at least throw in their TFT display that can be found even on bikes like the Ninja 650. The Yamaha MT-10 is a different story. On the regular model, the features you get include dual zone ABS, Yamaha quick shift, which is an upshifter only, throttle by wire, three mode traction control, LEDs, LCD instrument panel, and cruise control. You can also upgrade to the SP model to get a whole bunch more extras as well. When we're talking about extra features, the Yamaha does take the win, offering quite a bit more. But you will be paying for it. When we get to the price, there is a fairly substantial difference between these two. The Kawasaki, in my area, comes in at 17,507 right away, whereas the Yamaha starts at 21,299 right away, and then goes up another three grand to 24,499 for the SP model. That is a big difference in price between the two bikes, with the Kawasaki being almost 3,800 cheaper than the base model MT-10. Please note these are Australian prices and may be different in your country due to taxes. But nevertheless, is the MT-10 worth an almost four grand more than the Z1000 for the 20 extra horsepower and few extra features? That's up for you to decide. The Kawasaki Z1000 offers a raw, unfiltered riding experience that is not bogged down with any extra rider aids and has that beautiful Stagomi styling whereas the MT-10 brings a whopping amount of fun, but for a higher price. They both make very strong arguments, and at the end of the day, it really comes down to what sort of experience you're after. So which of these two leader class super nakeds would you have? Let me know down in the comments below, and while you're there, leave a suggestion for the next comparison video. If I use it, I'll give you a shout out in the video. Thanks again for watching guys, and please make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. You can also come chat with me on Instagram, at quackerjack underscore. Till next time guys, see ya!